Well, I was just looking at the uh, lineup of uh, today's program, Christian Connections, live. And man, we got a really great show. Got some really good music uh, by uh, Daniel Rotaro's crew. He uh, always bring, brings young people that uh, praise the Lord in song. We have our good friend, uh, Chaplin. Carl Ricketts. Good to be here. Good to be here. He, Great uh, to be here. Made the trip a uh, mile and a half away. Yes. From the medical center. He's uh, actually the director of Chaplin's the services at uh, Loma Linda University Medical Center, and Children's Hospital, and and uh, of course you're all all across the campus. <laughs> so, uh, so how's it going over there? Things are going great. Uh, it, it's been a wonderful season, and uh, we're so grateful uh, to God for the privilege of uh, continuing to uh, give care and to extend the teaching and healing ministry of Jesus Christ. Uh, we're very, very grateful. And meeting the challenges of the day? Challenges of the day? I would say... Um, just trying to resist being happy <laughs> and so happier. That, <laughs> that's, the, that's a mark, Sheila, of <laughs> um, a good walk with Jesus. <laughs> Amen. That trust. Yes, yes, just trusting in him. And uh, he, when you trust in him, everything will be all right. Another person that uh, trusts uh, Jesus is uh, Sheila Hodgkin, a regular uh, co-host here. Yes, uh, in, Amen. Uh, Christian Connections. And Ganem Hanna is, uh, by the way, out on assignment, so his spiritual commentary uh, will have to wait till next time. And of course, uh, Dr. Um, David Taylor uh, is still on assignment. I look forward to him uh, when he's available to uh, come back and join us uh, right here in the big stage of uh, Christian Connections. Um, Going to be talking about stewardship on this edition. And what it means, you know, there's more than financial stewardship, I'm told. We're going to find out about all of it uh, in our special presentation uh, from uh, Chaplain Ricketts. But in the meantime, Sheila, I feel like music. That's right. We get to hear from Joshua Rotaru and Lorna Quinto, and it's going to be a violin duet. And on the piano is Crystal Christensen, and they are going to be playing one of my favorite songs, Near to the Heart of God. By the way, I, I, I learned the history of the author, the writer of that song, mm -hmm. and um, he had two nieces that passed away as infants, and he wrote that song, Near to the Heart of Amen. God. Um, and it's a comforting song and just knowing that we are near to the heart of God yes. is, oh. is a great comfort. Amen. So we get to hear from our friends, Joshua Rutaro and Lorna Quinto. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. 
Crystal, Joshua, and Lorna for the Amen. wonderful music. And today happens to be Joshua's birthday. Happy birthday. Talking about uh, giving their gifts to God. So thank you so much, Joshua. Happy birthday, Joshua. Happy birthday. God bless you. Well, this is exciting. So we get to hear from you about stewardship. What is it all about? <laughs> wow. Uh, just a, I guess a little preamble. I think stewardship uh, has the power to position us uh, in relationship to God. Um, I think it has the ability to give us perspective um, on who we are and who we belong to. I think it gives us the ability to deepen our faith, uh, gives us the ability to uh, learn how to trust God more. And, um, and as I'll share in a little bit, um, I think it goes deeper than just money. Uh, many times we think of stewardship and we think of money, but I would dare say that that is just a byproduct of a proper stewardship uh, mindset. Um, and um, we will give when we are true stewards because we know that it belongs to our Lord. And so, uh, in fact, all of it belongs to him. Everything belongs to him. And I think we'll cover that uh, a little bit in a few, yeah. That's beautiful. Well, and Joshua was exemplified that, you know? Yes. His birthday, his talents, um, those are gifts from God. That's right. And he's giving it back. Giving it back to him. Giving back to Beautiful. him. Beautiful. So. Beautiful. Marlon, what are your thoughts? Well, I like to, you know, focus on uh, financial stewardship, being involved in this uh, nonprofit ministry. Amen. And I want to thank you, uh, by, as long as we're talking about it, for your financial support. Uh, your gifts really mean so much. Uh, we don't have any companies or, or corporations that uh, support the ministry, or the operation, or the taxes, or anything uh, here at the Loma Linda Broadcasting Network. It's you with your five and ten dollar, twenty. Occasionally we get some in the thousands, but it's the volume Amen. that makes a difference here at the Loma Linda Broadcasting Network. And as you enjoy the music of uh, you know the fine young people that come uh, week after week and uh, the not so young people that come week after week donating their time uh, all for the ministry of Jesus Christ so that this message can go around the world which it does through the multitude of foreign uh, language channels that LLBN uh, is the anchor for. Uh, also there's a health style, li uh, smart lifestyle Amen. television. If you haven't seen it, you better check it out uh, because it is dedicated to uh, the godly way of living, uh, diet and exercise. But I digress because there's more to stewardship than finances, like Carl just said. So uh, don't you think you better introduce them before I take all the time? <laughs> Right, well, we can't wait to hear Chap Chaplain Ricketts, so go ahead and take this stage, Amen. and we're going to hear more about stewardship Amen. as a whole. Amen. And I just want to give a hearty amen and an appreciation uh, to Lorna and Joshua. Uh, for your beautiful music and also the wonderful pianist uh, who blessed our hearts uh, on that piano. It's my favorite instrument. <laughs> and I just want to say thank you. Uh, you made it sound beautiful. Uh, just thanking uh, Christian Connections, the Christian Connections family 
for allowing me to come back one more time uh, to Sheila and Marlon, uh, to Ganem, to Dr. Taylor, uh, to the wonderful crew who you don't see behind the scenes, uh, who allow this beautiful Christian programming uh, to come to each and every one of you. Uh, I have an assignment to speak uh, today. And so, if you would be so kind to get your Bibles, um, you might get them on your devices, your iPad or your Android, or maybe you're on your desktop or laptop. But I would invite you to turn to the 24th division of Psalm, Psalm 24. And we're going to start from verse 1, verse 1. And I'll give you a second to find it. If you're in your homes, if you're on, in, in your car, uh, hopefully someone else is looking it up for you. Uh, but wherever you may be, uh, hopefully you will find this piece of scripture. And I'll read it for you. Psalm 24, verse 1, in the New American Standard Bible. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world, and those who dwell in it. For a few moments, I would like for us to focus on the theme, stewardship says. Stewardship says. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength, and our Redeemer. Let all who love him say, Amen and Amen. Stewardship says, Possession is nine-tenths of the law. One legal attorney, in his advertisement of services, notes that the idiom essentially means that when you physically possess something, you have a stronger legal claim to it than someone who just claims ownership of it. Another way to say this, according to the attorney, is that custody presumes ownership. The attorney goes on to say, concerning possession being nine-tenths of the law, it's the assumption that if you have physical custody of something, meaning possession, then the chances are better than average that it is, in fact, yours. Well, I want to let the saints of Christian connections know that there is a better than average chance that I belong to God. Uh, I get excited when I think about the fact that we belong to God. One of my favorite songwriters writes the words, the heavens are telling of God and his glory, a mighty God we serve. They speak of his character, awesome creator, a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. No other God above him, a mighty God we serve. If the birds are singing about our Lord, if the trees are swaying and giving praise to our creator, if the grass even grows uh, and, and gives acknowledgement to his creative power, if the sunflower even leans a little closer to the sun, I believe it's okay for you and I to give God praise every now and then. Oh, not just every now and then, how about every moment? Because he has created us. The Bible says he has created us. We didn't create ourselves. We are his people. 
and the sheep of his pasture. That is why we come into his gates with thanksgiving. That is why we come into his courts with praise, because we honor the God of all creation. I want you to know, saints, that as we ponder this grandeur of God, God is the creator God. He has preeminence over everything. Uh, I love how the psalmist says, the earth is the Lord's. I think back to Genesis and how he spoke, and out of nothing things appeared. He spoke, let there be light. And have you all ever wondered, where did light come from? How did light come together? How did all of the particles, how did all of the elements come together and know to meet at the very moment that God said, let there be light? Well, I want you to know that God has control over everything. He has ownership over everything. Not only does he own the tangible, but he owns the intangible. Not only does he have creative preeminence over the things that we see, he has creative preeminence over the things that we cannot see. I want the entire Christian Connections family to lift up in this moment the very fact God is our Lord. God is our creator. He has creative power. Not only is, the, he, is he the creator, but he's also the sustainer. Anything that he makes, he keeps. Anything that he has put into being, he protects. He is the protective God. He is the loving God. Oh, I love how one of my favorite songwriters said uh, uh, that there are moments where, where we, we might be down. Uh, there are moments where we might be depressed, but God has his hands on you. He said he will see you through. Uh, uh, and, and, and when you cry, he's holding you. So lift your head up high for he will provide. Not only is God the creator God, not only is he the sustaining God, but he's God the Father. He is Abba. He is the one who holds you when you're down. He's the one who encourage you, encourages you and picks you up when you are going low. He's the one who sees us. He knows we are but dust, but he loves us because he put within us the breath of life, and we became a living soul. Saints, I want you to know that God created us. God sustains us. God loves us. God cares for us. And I need you to understand that you don't even own yourself. God is the owner of it all. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns the stars in the Milky Way. He owns the atmosphere that we try to go through. He owns the land and the street that you walk on. He owns it all. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and all they that dwell within. Saints, while possession is nine-tenths of the law, we have a problem. We have a problem even with this text because while it appears that God is the owner, there are moments when we don't treat him like he is the owner. There are moments where we believe we are the owners. There are moments where we have put ourselves in a position that we are not to be in. Humanity exhibits tension in this text. Some of us, due to our familiarity with earth life and our handling of its materials, the house, the car, the job, the money, have severed God's ownership rights. We write theologically incorrect songs sometimes, saying even these words, go get your stuff back. Oh, and now many are confused uh, about who is the creator and who is the created. Who is the owner and who is the steward? 
when there is confusion on who is the owner and who is the steward, we incorrectly position ourselves in this life and the next. I want you to understand, saints, uh, the, the word steward, it is an ancient job title. It describes a person who takes care of or manages something, check this, they manage something for someone else. They take care of or manage something for someone else. Let me make it clear. When we view our, ourselves as owners, we find ourselves telling God what we will do with the gifts he has given us. But when we view ourselves as stewards, we give God preeminence with every gift we receive in our lives. It is just like you heard the beautiful sounds of the pianist and the violinist this, this uh, evening. They have a gift. Uh, if you don't understand, yes, it is a talent, but it is also a gift from God. God has allowed them, and for those who are not musically inclined, I need you to understand that many instruments, you might see them, but behind those instruments are notes, and behind those notes are then even chords, and behind those chords are scales, and behind those scales are various scales, harmonic scales, and, and, and minor scales, and, and normal scales, and, and even behind that is a theory that we try to understand who God is. For anyone to get on a piano, for anyone to pick up an instrument, for anyone to, 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 to play the violin, it is a gift from God. And we ought to give every gift back to him. And that is what they did. Beautifully, they gave their gift back to him. Even as Sheila pointed out, uh, our friend Joshua, today is his birthday. He is giving his life back to God. And this is the tension in the text, that in our earth life, there are moments when we do not give back to God the gift that he has given us. Uh, some of you may be wondering, well, pastor, how do you know this? Well, we can look at the Bible and, and, and we can kind of cover a few examples. One of the greatest stories ever told, one of the greatest stories ever told, it is the healing of Jesus. Uh, uh, the healing of Jesus towards 10 lepers. Uh, yes, you've heard the story. Uh, there were 10 individuals who had leprosy. Uh, they were from multiple cultures, from many different backgrounds. And, and you had some uh, uh, of, of the house of Israel, you had some who were Samaritan. But anyway, they were all congregated together because they had this disease of leprosy. And I want you to know there were 10 individuals individuals and my Bible tells me that out of the 10 individuals that were healed only one person came back to tell God thank you this is a powerful revelation because didn't we just say that possession is nine tenths of the law but how interesting it is that only one out of 10 came back to give God thanks oh this is interesting because this is how powerful the story is. Jesus meets the lepers, and as he meets the lepers, he wants them to be healed, but he does not heal them on the spot. He actually asked them to go and show themselves to the priest. So now the 10 lepers who have leprosy are now walking, and they're about to go and show themselves to the priest. They begin walking. Jesus has commanded them, which is a good thing thing, he's commanded them to go and show themselves to the priest. I need you to understand that they have not been healed yet. And so as they begin walking, 
as they begin moving, as they begin walking towards the priest, their bodies begin to change. Things start to happen. The leprosy begins to fall off. I can imagine some of them were able to see their skin in ways that they had never seen it in years. Some of them were walking, and as they were walking, they began to understand that things were changing on their hands. Their face was becoming new. Their legs were being restored and as they began and kept on walking the transformation the healing of God took place nine individuals kept on walking uh, nine individuals kept on moving nine individuals said I've got to keep on going but there was one person who turned around one person who said I, I, I can't just keep on walking one person who said yes I understand that my body is changing and I understand that I'm healed now but I must turn around and go and tell the one who healed me thank you. Oh, his life had been turned around. He understands this, that, 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 that Jesus, not only did he just heal me for this life, but he has the power to heal me for the next life. Uh, he understands this, that I, I, I don't need to just go back and try to reclaim my position in life. I don't need to just go back and get back everything that I had that I lost. I don't need all of that as much as I need Jesus. And so this one leper who is now healed practices the art of stewardship because stewardship commands that every now and then we say thank you. Stewardship says thank you. Uh, uh, he turns around to go and tell his healer, his maker, his creator, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. I know that you touched my body and I know that one day I might die, but I know that even if this body dies, I have hope in the resurrection. I have hope in the next life. You, God, have positioned me to know that you are Lord in my here, you are Lord in my now, and you'll be Lord in my eternity. And he says, thank you. Saints, I need you to understand. When you understand stewardship, your life is no longer your own. It's one thing to have goals and dreams and to pursue the things we want, but it's another thing to go and tell God, thank you for giving me the goals. Thank you, God, for giving me the dreams. Thank you, God, for healing me. He didn't heal me so I can just go back. He healed me so that I can have relationships relationship with him forever. Stewardship says every now and then we've got to say thank you. Oh, I love this story because it reminds me in my life when God blesses me with something. I ought not just run off into the thing he has blessed me unto, but I ought to pause turn around and face the God who has turned my situation around and tell him, thank you. Oh, some of you might not fully understand it yet, but there is another story that impresses me, and not only does it impress me, but it impresses Jesus. And yes, many of you have heard the story, but I need you to also understand the backdrop of the story. Oh, yes, uh, everyone is giving their offering. Everyone is giving their gifts. But in the background, you have individuals who are dressed very well. Uh, they are prestigious. Uh, they are noble. Uh, they are proper. Uh, yes, they are wealthy. Uh, but the Bible doesn't even just stop there. Yes, it highlights how well-dressed they are and how well-spoken they are and how many deals they might be trying to make in the religious circles. But it also highlights that they are individuals who plot on widows. Uh, it highlights that these were individuals 
who would ha plot on widows. And if you don't know anything back in the old day, what would happen is if a, a wife lost her husband or if a mother lost her son and had no one to care for the property, what would happen is that people would begin to encroach upon her property and move the ancient boundary stones and get in a little closer until they choked her property out. I need you to understand these were individuals giving offering. But Jesus is there with his 12. And there is a widow who is handling two copper coins. One version of the Bible says these two copper coins were even just worth one penny. How low of a value it is that she has two pieces of monetary a uh, 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 collateral in her hand that's only worth one. <laughs> oh, she comes up and as she is putting in her offering, I need you to understand that Jesus is moved. Jesus is impressed. Jesus calls his disciples and says, hey, 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 look at this act of stewardship. I need you to understand this. She had just lost her husband. She, she was going through grief. In fact, she has two copper coins. She is poor. She's in poverty. But she comes to the giving area. And she could have, in all honesty, said, I'll just give one today. She could have said, I, I need at least one to take care of my needs. But the Bible records, and this is what impressed Jesus so much is that she took both of those copper coins and she put them in the collection of the offering. All oh, saints, I don't want you to miss this on Christian Connections. Uh, what she put in there, the Bible says, was all of her livelihood. The Bible says she put in all of her living. The Greek word is bios, meaning I could even go off on this. She gave all of her life. And the second thing that I want to share with you tonight is that stewardship says that you must give all of your life. Oh, everybody else was giving of their abundance. And I need you to understand that sometimes giving is not true giving. Giving just mirrors something. It mirrors that you're supporting God. It mirrors that you are supporting ministry. But it is not truly you giving your all. Jesus is impressed because this widow gives her all, and he highlights others have cast in out of their abundance. They still had room in the bank. They still had a lot in the savings. They still had a lot at home. And Jesus is not looking for us to be stingy givers, uh, 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 not even with our finances, but also God does not want us to be stingy givers with our life. Oh, Jesus is moved, and he is so moved by this woman's giving, he calls the, the disciples to look at this. But not only does Jesus call the disciples? I believe he calls us to look at it. He wants us to practice this act of stewardship, of understanding that every now and then we've got to tell God thank you. And every now and then, even when the ends don't meet and even when things don't seem to make sense, we must still give God our all. This is a powerful message. Because it challenges us to put our faith and to put our trust in the only wise God. It is a powerful message because it challenges even me to put my faith and to put my trust in the God who has created all, the God who sustains all, and the God who cares for all. Don't you ever think for a moment that God doesn't see you in your challenge? Don't you ever think for a moment that God doesn't desire the best for you? God has blessed you with life so that you can give him back your life. And this is why we must understand that we are stewards 
of the life that God has given us. God is the owner. And if God is the owner, I am simply managing and caring for something that God has asked me to look after. Oh, in fact, the Bible even says, don't you know that your body, don't you know that you're not your own, but that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit desires to abide in you. We must allow this house to be a house where God can dwell. We must allow this house to be a house where God can reside. We must allow this house to be a house where God can love through. We must allow this house to be a house where God can lavish others with compassion, grace, and forgiveness. If we let God in this house, it shows that he is the owner. If we let God in this house, it shows that we are stewards. And when we allow God to have his way, blessings will happen. Christian Connections, I want you to know that sometimes we get caught up with life. We get so caught up with life that we don't know how to let it go. Sometimes we get so full of our own pride, we don't know how to say thank you. And every now and then we've got to learn what stewardship says. Stewardship says it's okay to tell God thank you. Stewardship says it's okay to give God our life, to give God our all. When we allow God in, we understand who is the owner and that we are the stewards. It is at that moment when truly we can practice this gift of stewardship in every facet of our lives. Sometimes adulthood and thinking that it's my house and my car and my job and my family and my everything. Sometimes it causes us to miss out on understanding truly who God is. But every now and then, maybe we ought to play a game. Uh, there was a little game that Charles Schultz, Charlie Brown, he had one of his characters lead out in this game and her name was Lucy. And Lucy would play a song and and I don't know if Linus was playing on the keys, but she would sing the song, Listen to Lucy, Listen to Lucy. And everyone would, would do anything that Lucy would say. When Lucy said, move or raise your hands, they would raise their hands because Lucy said so. Oh, it's interesting. Uh, uh, but when Lucy said, move your hands, they would be out of the game because they didn't hear Lucy said. Oh, it's very interesting. Charles Schultz got this game from a game we all know, Simon Says. And, and Simon Says is a very fun game, and uh, it's a game where there's someone who is calling out to everyone. Simon Says, walk forward. And if Simon Says, walk forward, everyone then walks forward. Uh, but if, if, if the one who is in the role of Simon just says, walk forward, and you walk forward, you're out of the game. Oh, I bring this up to you because this game kind of lets us know what real Christianity is and what Christianity is not. There might be behaviors and actions that we participate in. And yes, it's the action of giving. Yes, it's the action of, 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 of doing Christian moves. And, but, but unless it's connected to the God who said to do it, it is not a move approved by heaven. And so, stewardship says, give your heart to him. Stewardship says, give your resources to him. Stewardship says, give your home to him. Stewardship says, give your car to him. I still remember all the people I used to pick up for church in college. Stewardship says, give your family to him. 
Oh, when stewardship says this, stewardship wants you to be in alignment with Jesus. And this is the reality of life, that God the owner came so that we would be saved. He came for his life. He came for all of his children. We belong to him. And so, saints, I want you to just listen to what stewardship says. Give thanks to him. Give your all to him. If Jesus commands us to worship and praise him and to give him thanks, if Jesus implores and encourages us to give our all, if Jesus is moved by these two individuals who practice stewardship, I believe Jesus will be moved by these actions in your life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I ask that we would not treat Christianity as a game, but that we would hear truly what stewardship says, that we would be challenged to give more than ever before. Oh God, may we give you our all. May every good and perfect gift which comes from you, O God, which comes from above, may we understand, O God, that because it is from you, we can trust you with it. And God, even as you blessed the healed leper, and even as you blessed the grieving widow, I ask that you would see us in our condition today. Whatever condition we may be in, O God, any condition that would cause us to lack trust and to doubt that you are the caring, loving, creating God. I ask, O oh Lord, that you would move and intervene, that we would have abundant faith, that we would trust you more, that we would put it in your hands, O oh God, and see what the master can do with it. For little becomes much when we place it in the master's hands. May we place our lives in your hands. May we place our all in your hands. Keep us, O oh God, in your name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Will you join us? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of awesome layers. I think so. I I didn't really spend much time in studying stewardship. You know, it's mm -hmm. all about the, mm -hmm. you know, what Jesus said, and, mm -hmm. you know, Paul said, and to the Corinthians and the Thessalonians and mm -hmm. the Philippians. Yeah. The steer stewardship never really uh, jumped out at me. I, yeah, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, it's true. I'm stuck in the financial aspect mm -hmm. of stewardship because that's really important to the ministry. And it's also important, you know, in governing our lives. Mm. What we do with our money is, you know, mm -hmm. kind of an indication of, you know, where our compass yes. is set. But I never, never considered oh, gratitude as an attitude of stewardship. Yes. This is just really the first time, so um, very impressed. <laughs> you know, it's, just, just it, opens it's, it's bigger. A whole, yeah. It's just like studying the sanctuary. It's more mm -hmm. than yes, just yes. three compartments. You know? Right. It's not just like um, you know, when I heard about it, just about offering, right? Right. <laughs> the stewardship, and but um, you said it in that verse that Psalms 24. Yes. Um, it stems from that. That. We belong to God. Yes. And so what I heard you saying too is, is the, the basic, if we understand and realize that our identity is in Christ, that we are his, that yes. everything in the world, in the universe belongs to him and, and, and how he loves us, yes. then we're able to entrust. Yes our lives and, and connecting to him. 
Sheila, I think you, you hit the nail on the head mm -hmm. <laughs> with that. The resources that he gives us, the families that he, get, he blesses us with, the homes that he covers our heads with, the vehicles that he gives us transportation, the resources in the bank that we have, they're all from him. But even greater than all those things is his love for us, mm -hmm. is the, the master designer, the one who created us, who causes us to live. Mm. If he has created us and caused us to live, and has even given us the environment, he will take care of us. Mm -hmm. He came on a cross mm -hmm. for us. And we can trust that God with anything he places in our hands. Sometimes we hold on to things thinking that we can figure it out. And we put ourselves in the place of God. I love even at the end of Psalm 24 that when they come back from the battle, they sing a song. Lift up ye heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. They gave the battle to the Lord. He will take care of our battles even. Mm. There are problems in this world, yes, mm. but we can trust him even with the battle. They would even ask the, the, the question, the rhetorical question, who is this king of glory? Mm. The Lord God strong and mighty, the Lord God mighty in battle. He is the king of glory. We can trust him Amen. because he sees us through everything. When we trust this God, who is the only God, we practice stewardship mm. because we give our lives to him. Mm -hmm. We give our resources to him. We give our plans to him. We take ourselves out of the place of ownership and we understand we have been sent. We are managing what he has given us and we give it to him. Mm. That positions us in this life and the next. Mm. It prepares us for heaven. Amen. God runs it all. It's his and let us not be deceived. Many have tried to trick us to think that Satan rules this earth. He has no power uh, over God. God is the creator of this earth. Mm. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Amen. And us who dwell within. You know, I, I like what you said about, um, you know, we get distracted by the world yeah. and its challenges. And when you look back at Job, who had everything taken away, yes. he understood yes. that everything belonged yes. to God. And um, it, it makes me, you know, when you talked about the story about the widow who gave everything that, that she, she had, yes. you know, it makes me think, what do you think propelled her to just offer everything she had? You, you know, first off, you touched on Job, so I can't just leave yeah, the yeah, Job piece, yeah. right? That was beautiful. Yeah. Job even noticed that the trees belong to God. Mm -hmm. And because he saw the tree come back to life, he asked the first question of resurrection, probably chronologically in the Bible. He's like, well, if you could do it for the tree, could you do that for us, for humanity? Mm -hmm. And he says, all the days of my life, I will wait until my change comes. And he understands that God has power over all of creation. What drove her mm -hmm. to do this? I, I, I wonder sometimes with my curiosity, did she know he was there? But, but even that, I don't know if that made any difference. I think she trusted God so much that no matter what was happening in society and no matter what she was going through, that God would see her through. Mm. I, I, and sometimes it has to be so simple because logic says, mm. no. Mm. Logic says, keep the two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Maybe a little bit of mm -hmm. faith says, keep one. Mm. But her all says, it's better in his hands. And when we put it in his hands, he doesn't fail. I, 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 I wish I could... I wish I could have interviewed her mm. to ask her, what drove you to do that? 
What drove you to give a gift that impressed God? <laughs> but I mean, God, who owns it all, is moved by that. I wish I could have interviewed her, um, but I believe she had a faith in God that was so strong that not even her environment could d disconnect her from him. Uh, and I believe she gave her all mm -hmm. uh, because she knew that God is her all. Amen. Yeah. Well, we'll get that chance in eternity. Amen. And I think, I think yes. Job, the widow, had that eternal mindset. Yeah. And uh, what would you tell those, you know, who, who just want to, to, you know, who are just in beginning, you know, our viewers. Yes. How, um, how do, can we get that eternal mindset that, that we are truly gods? I would say in the brief time that we have, I, I love how Romans puts it. Um, we don't have to conform to this world, but we can be transformed by the renewing of our mm -hmm. minds. Mm -hmm. I think we can remove the, con the chaos, the confusion, and when we focus on the fact that God keeps us, and he sustains us, and that he made us, and that he loves us, mm -hmm. I think we'll make it through. Um, we just need to think about him every day. Just think about him, spend mm -hmm. a few moments and think about him. I promise as we just meditate on his goodness mm. and we remember what he's done for us in the past, we'll see how he comes through for us now and how he will come through in the future. Amen. So it brings to mind that thank you. If all we can say is thank you to God, yeah. then that's, that's enough. It's powerful. And it, and it's, it transforms us. Oh, I, 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 think, I think it makes him so happy. Yeah. When we can say, Abba, Father, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, uh, and, and, and we see that in our own lives when we tell anyone thank you. Mm. And I say, Marla, thank you. I say, Sheila, thank you. Mm -hmm. it, it, when we also say, as Paul said, I thank my God upon every remembrance mm -hmm. of you. I, I think stewardship. You know what I think? I think you need to come back so we can continue with oh, this right. discussion. Oh, but powerful, uh, powerful. Music. Oh, we do. We have music. And, oh. and we're so grateful for our musicians. So we get to hear from Lorna, Joshua, Amen. and Michelle on the piano. Amen. So, I mean, Crystal. Sorry, Crystal. Amen. Crystal. Thank yes. you, Crystal.
Thank you so much, Joshua, Lorna, and Crystal. The song was It Was For You. And we just want to thank you, our viewers, for, for your wonderful gifts, your prayers. And we want to thank God for you, honestly. And uh, we want to thank you, Chaplain thank you all. Ricketts, for your wonderful message. It's true. Uh, once we give our thanks to God um, and know that we are from him and that he loves us, we can get through any, any challenges, anything we face in this world because we have Christ. Christ is our victory. So God bless you. Thank you, Marlon. No, oh, thank you, Sheila. And just a reminder to, to keep thinking and praying and um, together um, with Christ, we'll make it through. Thank you for watching LLBN, Lighting Lives, Blessing Nations.